pretend podcasting isn't boring. Welcome to Juan Around the Podcast. Today we go around the newsroom tale when I interviewed Atif. Remember that the tales from the newsroom are based on real experiences and published articles from my journalistic career. The narrative style is a tribute to the noir genre from the 40s and 50s. Enjoy it. But first remember, Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. It is free, has everything you need to record and edit audio using your smartphone or computer. You can even make money through ads. With one click, your content goes to Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms. So download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm. That is A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M and start today. Now, let's turn around to our chat. The monthly salary in my country is around 6,000 Mexican pesos, about 300 US dollars. So not much has changed since I interviewed that thief. Despite what many tourists may think, Cancun has dangerous neighborhoods and some, perhaps even more dangerous than those in Mexico City. The day was lazy and the articles I handed over to my editor didn't seem like enough. The same topics, the same routine. Well, nothing to do to correct it. The newsroom had already closed. But I could do something special for the next day. I left everything in my apartment. My cell phone and my money. I only took enough for the round trip on the bus. Where I was heading? I was going to those dangerous neighborhoods in Cancun. The ones that are not advertised in tourist brochures. I got off the bus with the drivers gazed on me. I guess my dress or costume was effective. Maybe he thought I was going to steal from him. The idea was to wander the streets until I found or be found by a thief and interview him. Simple. It sounds stupid, but sometimes, and perhaps some of the best articles, start with stupidity. I choose the region 102 because several years ago I lived there and a boy tried to rob me. At that time I was working as a tortero, kind of a cook for street food. And to save money, I walked back home every night. Every day I came back around midnight with my hands in my pockets and a Victorinox knife in the right pouch. A boy, maybe around 17 years old, asked me for money. Certainly, I was not going to give it to him. So I tried to convince him that I was not carrying anything. But I think he was convinced when I showed him the knife ready to attack. I remember the boy was totally high and told me to at least give him my knife. <laughs> You're right. After almost 15 minutes, people told him to give up and he did. But not before telling me that he liked me because I was stubborn. And that under his shirt, he had a bigger knife than mine. Oh, such a beautiful memories. But this time it was me who was looking for something from thieves. And rather than getting out of the mess, I was looking for it. It was 2 a.m. in the morning and I was walking through the streets. But for almost an hour, the only thing I found were dogs prowling in packs in search for food. Silent witnesses of the night. I followed them for a couple of blocks until I came across a livelier street. There were groups of trunks sitting here and there and in the background, the prize. Two guys leaning against a wall, loitering. The classic behavior of drug dealers and crooks. I stopped around 200 meters away and stayed in the shadows and, like falling from the sky, a victim. Someone who was returning from a party or from his work at a bar. After all, Cancun is touristy. One of the criminals showed to the victim a knife while the other took away his cell phone and wallet. Should I have helped him? Maybe. But I'm not a police officer. I'm a journalist. And I no longer carry a knife everywhere. 
They told him to run and they began to walk calmly to the opposite direction. The next block, they separated, each one to his house after a day of work. My heart began to pound in my chest, knowing what I was about to do. I would like to say that I followed the one who looked more rough or with a better story to tell, but I just followed the one who did not have the knife, or at least that's what I thought, with the same element of surprise with which they approached their prey. That's how I approached the thief. Before he knew it, I was already in front of him. Every time you do things like this, you have two options. You can be the wolf or the lamb, the teacher or the apprentice. Both can work well, but most people are more open when they don't feel in danger. Pretending to be the rookie they take under their wing is very effective. After the usual cursing and threats, the conversation began. I told him that my father had cancer and that there was no way for me to make money. So I was thinking about doing what he was doing. More cursing and more threats, but well, he didn't have the knife, so I was safe. Or so I thought. He asked me what my job was and I told him that I used to be a journalist. It is a rule that I have. I don't know why, I always tell them in one way or another that I am a journalist. I think they see in my eyes that I am telling the truth and they feel more convinced because why would a journalist say that he is a journalist if he had something to hide? Or perhaps it is one of the things I am proud of in my life and I do not want to hide it from anybody. I did the role of the lamb spectacularly, I sat on the floor leaning against the metal curtain of a business. It is the point where you know if he took the bait or not. If he stops, he believed you. If he leaves, he will not believe you no matter how hard you try. He stopped and sat next to me. I know what you are going to say. Where are these journalistic ethics? Why lie? And along etc. I'm going to tell you a secret. This is the job, the real one, you lie to get the truth. More threats and more cursing and then the truth. His name was Pedro. He was born there in Cancun, but his parents came from Veracruz. He spent his entire life in the same city, except for some time in Playa del Carmen. He told me that he was hired to build a hotel, but when the hotel was finished, the work was finished too. He went from one job to another without finding anything stable. He got to the point where he could go early to El Crucero, a place where the unemployed daily sit on the benches, waiting for someone to stop and offer them a job, almost always low paid and usually in construction. At his lowest point, his son Raul was about to be born. With no job and no money, or when even the rent, and with his wife about to give birth, desperate wound out over him. Pedro kept telling me his story, all of it. As a journalist, you judge with ink. At the time of the talk is what you need the least. He told me that he was stressed and that he was taking it out on his wife. He did not know what to do. And one day, he just went out and started asking for money. Every time he left his room in the Torcasitas neighborhood, he went out to ask for money all day. He went from explaining his situation to begging and finally to demanding. At first he was scared and ashamed and nobody gave him anything. Then people gave him money out of fear that he would be aggressive since he was rude and threatening. In the end, he only began to pass with his friendly Hey, motherfucker, shit is about to get real, hand over the money. That was the beginning of a life of crime that possibly continues until now. It is a job, nothing more, he told me, explaining that he used to earn 72 pesos a day doing small chores, but now, not anymore. Now he earns enough. What about the police? Well, 
they are an inconvenience because they always ask him for a cut, but nothing more. Perhaps because he had already adapted to his work, or because he thought I was in the same situation. He continued to tell me about his life. He told me that the three worst moments of his life as a criminal were when his wife claimed him about their poverty. The first time he especially went out to steal, and the first time that he had to injure a person. I tried to get him to tell me more about that time, but he was cautious, and I didn't want to push. The situations are volatile, after all. He limited himself to tell me with indignation. What happens is that some people try to fight back, and continued explaining that it was his job, and he could not get all beaten to his house. First, his wife did not know what he was doing. Then she suspected, and finally accepted. She was dramatic about it, but when she saw that we no longer lived in poverty, she never said a word again, Pedro told me with pride. He quickly met people and began to work as a team. Police put his former partner in jail because he killed the woman. And now, Pedro works with somebody else. Let's say a calmer person, since he doesn't use drugs. Pedro's tool for work was a butcher knife, but he never takes it out unless it is necessary. When people get stupid, as he say. His rapid success was only paused once when he had no money to give to police investigators. He ended up in the hospital. Did you also get stupid? I asked him, trying to hide the irony. Yes, but now I know to be gentle with them, he told me without much attention. Although his wife asked him to save up and live the life of crime so that he would not end up locked up, Pedro finds that difficult. After all, stealing is where the money is. I did not want to be this. My family does not speak to me because they know what I do and even my friends could steal from me since they do what I do. But it is what I have to live. Now, I do not know another way to work. I know it is a risk, but what I want is for my son to do well. I do it for him, he said calmly. We continued talking for several hours and finally he left. I said for a few minutes, the article was going to be good for a day and then it would disappear. I wondered if it was worth taking a risk for a journalistic piece. But as Pedro said, it is my job. It is what I have to live. Now I do not know another way to work. I was grateful not to be in his shoes and I was grateful to have escaped unharmed. In things like this, the slightest change of mood can make a brutal difference. I waited until dawn and took a bus back to my apartment. I had three missed calls from the newspaper. I called back my editor-in-chief and he explained that there was a container with a fetus found in a park and I had to go there and cover the story. This world is hell, I thought. I made a coffee and drank it like a shot of tequila. I got my things, got on the motorcycle and headed to the park. New day, new news. Well, I hope you liked the episode of today and let me know if you want to hear more content like this one. Please leave any question you have about any episode or topic and I will get back to you as soon as possible. For more interviews, analysis and stories, subscribe to my podcast. You can listen to it on all platforms including Spotify, Google and Apple Podcast, and of course Anchor. Watch videos about my travels on my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. In all of them as one around. You can also support me on my Patreon and buy me a coffee account, both as Juan Around. All links on the description. Like, share and subscribe and see you around. Your booze mean nothing, I've seen what makes you cheer.